May 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel chapters 24 and 25 from the Old Testament. When Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, they told him, Look, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 select men from all Israel and went to find David and his men in the region of the rocks of the mountain goats. He came to the sheepfolds by the road where there was a cave. Saul went into it to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the recesses of the cave. David's men said to him, This is the day about which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you can do to him whatever seems appropriate to you. So David got up and quietly cut off an edge of Saul's robe. Afterward, David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off an edge of Saul's robe. He said to his men, May the Lord keep me far away from doing such a thing to my Lord, who is the Lord's chosen one, by extending my hand against him. After all, he is the Lord's chosen one. David restrained his men with these words and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. Then Saul left the cave and started down the road. Afterward, David got up and went out of the cave. He called out after Saul, My Lord, O King! When Saul looked behind him, David kneeled down and bowed with his face to the ground. David said to Saul, Why do you pay attention when men say, David is seeking to do you harm? Today your own eyes see how the Lord delivered you, this very day into my hands in the cave. Some told me to kill you, but I had pity on you and said, I will not extend my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's chosen one. Look, my father, and see the edge of your robe in my hand. When I cut off the edge of your robe, I didn't kill you. So realize and understand that I am not planning evil or rebellion, even though I have not sinned against you, you are waiting in ambush to take my life. May the Lord judge between the two of us, and may the Lord vindicate me over you, but my hand will not be against you. It's like the old proverb says, from evil people, evil proceeds. But my hand will not be against you. Who has the king of Israel come out after? Who is it that you are pursuing, a dead dog, a single flea? May the Lord be our judge and arbiter. May he see and arbitrate my case and deliver me from your hands. When David finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Then Saul wept loudly. He said to David, You are more innocent than I, for you have treated me well, even though I have tried to harm you. You have explained today how you have treated me well. The Lord delivered me into your hand, but you did not kill me. Now if a man finds his enemy, does he send him on his way in good shape? May the Lord repay you with good this day for what you have done to me. Now look, I realize that you will in fact be king, and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand. So now swear to me in the Lord's name that you will not kill my descendants after me, or destroy my name from the house of my father. David promised Saul this on oath. Then Saul went to his house, and David and his men went up to the stronghold. Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned him. They buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David left and went down to the desert of Paran. There was a man in Maon, whose business was in Carmel. This man was very wealthy. He owned 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. At that time, he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The man's name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was both wise and beautiful, but the man was harsh and his deeds were evil. He was a celibate. When David heard in the desert that Nabal was shearing his sheep, he sent ten servants, saying to them, Go up to Carmel to see Nabal, and give him greetings in my name. Then you will say to my brother, Peace to you and your house. Peace to all that is yours. Now I hear that you are shearing sheep for you. When your shepherds were with us, we neither insulted them nor harmed them the whole time they were in Carmel. Ask your own servants, they can tell you. May my servants find favor in your sight, for we have come at the time of a holiday. 
Please provide us, your servants and your son David, with whatever you can spare. So David's servants went and spoke all these words to Nabal in David's name. Then they paused. But Nabal responded to David's servants. Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? This is a time when many servants are breaking away from their masters. Should I take my bread, my water, and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shearers and give them to these men? I don't even know where they came from. So David's servants went on their way. When they had returned, they came and told David all these things. Then David instructed his men, Each of you strap on your sword. So each one strapped on his sword. And David also strapped on his sword. About 400 men followed David up, while 200 stayed behind with the equipment. But one of the servants told Nabal's wife, Abigail, David sent messengers from the desert to greet our Lord, but he screamed at them. These men were very good to us. They did not insult us, nor did we sustain any loss during the entire time we were together in the field. Both night and day they were a protective wall for us the entire time we were with them, while we were tending our flocks. Now be aware of this and see what you can do. For disaster has been planned for our Lord and his entire household. He is such a wicked person that no one tells him anything. So Abigail quickly took 200 loaves of bread, two containers of wine, five prepared sheep, five seahs of roasted grain, a hundred bunches of raisins, and 200 lumps of pressed figs. She loaded them on donkeys and said to her servants, Go on ahead of me, I will come after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. Riding on her donkey, she went down under cover of the mountain. David and his men were coming down to meet her, and she encountered them. Now David had been thinking, In vain I guarded everything that belonged to this man in the desert. I didn't take anything from him, but he has repaid my good with evil. God will severely punish David if I leave alive until morning, even one male from all those who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she got down quickly from the donkey, threw herself down before David, and bowed to the ground. Falling at his feet, she said, My Lord, I accept all the guilt. Please let your female servant speak with my Lord. Please listen to the words of your servant. My Lord should not pay attention to this wicked man, Nabal. He simply lives up to his name. His name means fool, and he is indeed foolish. But I, your servant, did not see the servants my Lord sent. Now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives and as surely as you live, it is the Lord who has kept you from shedding blood and taking matters into your own hands. Now may your enemies and those who seek to harm my Lord be like Nabal. Now let this present that your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the servants who follow my Lord. Please forgive the sin of your servant, for the Lord will certainly establish the house of my Lord, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. May no evil be found in you all your days. When someone sets out to chase you and to take your life, the life of my Lord will be wrapped securely in the bag of the living by the Lord your God. But he will sling away the lives of your enemies from the sling's pocket. The Lord will do for my Lord everything that he promised you, and he will make you a leader over Israel. Your conscience will not be overwhelmed with guilt for having poured out innocent blood and for having taken matters into your own hands. When the Lord has granted my Lord success, please remember your servant. Then David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you this day to meet me. Praise be your good judgment. May you yourself be rewarded for having prevented me this day from shedding blood and taking matters into my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, he who has prevented me from harming you, if you had not come so quickly to meet me, by morning's light not even one male belonging to Nabal would have remained alive. Then David took from her hand what she had brought to him. He said to her, Go back to your home in peace. Be assured that I have listened to you and responded favorably. When Abigail went back to Nabal, he was holding a banquet in his house like that of the king. Nabal was having a good time and was very intoxicated. She told him absolutely nothing until morning's light.
In the morning, when Nabal was sober, his wife told him about these matters. He had a stroke and was paralyzed. After about ten days, the Lord struck Nabal down, and he died. When David heard that Nabal had died, he said, Praise be the Lord who has vindicated me and avenged the insult that I suffered from Nabal. The Lord has kept his servant from doing evil, and he has repaid Nabal for his evil deeds. Then David sent word to Abigail and asked her to become his wife. So the servants of David went to Abigail at Carmel and said to her, David has sent us to you to bring you back to be his wife. She arose, bowed her face toward the ground and said, Your female servant, like a lowly servant, will wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Then Abigail quickly went and mounted her donkey, with five of her female servants accompanying her. She followed David's messengers and became his wife. David had also married Ahinoam from Jezreel. The two of them became his wives. Now Saul had given his daughter Michael, David's wife, to Paltiel, son of Laish, who was from Galam. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for putting people in our life like you put Abigail into David's life to hold us accountable to what you have called us to do. She, she wasn't just protecting her husband and her household, although she was very wise to do so. But what she was telling David was exactly what you would have told him. And, and he recognized that at the end when he thanked her for her wisdom. God, I just thank you so much for my accountability partners who hold my hand through rough times and also hold my feet to the fire when I need to learn some of the hard decisions and make difficult choices and change my heart about things. You know, God, people, people that you've put into our lives to disciple us, to help train us up to, to be better warriors for you, they have a really hard job. You know, we fight against them. We don't do what we're supposed to do. Uh, we make poor choices. And yet they continue to pray for us, remind us of your word, and are there with us as we go through a hard time of changing our heart into what it is that you want us to do, God. I just thank you so much for sending your strength into those, into the lives and the hearts of those people to stick with it, to stick with us <laughs> who they're discipling through those hard times when we're just being pains. God, thank you. Thank you for your patience as well. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>